I call this the operation. In Campbell River, I had chronic exhaustion for the last eight years of work in the mill. This came from long hours as a mechanic. I also had gallstones that gave me a lot of pain when I had anything oily. After seeing the doctor, I was told, it's just old age creeping up on you. Go back to work. I guess the Indians got old at 55. Since I was too tired to argue with them, I suffered from time to time with stones and pain for two years until I accepted a buyout offer to downsize the number of people working in the pulp mill. I left Campbell River, B.C. When I got to Burnaby, B.C., a doctor in the clinic had me go and have an ultrasound test. This proved that I had gallstones. I guess the bladder was too scored up to do anything but remove it. This was scheduled at Burnaby General Hospital. The doctor at the hospital, who I hadn't met, prescribed a little bottle of castor oil. This didn't clean me out since I didn't go to the bathroom at all. This may have been a planned mistake. Again, I was too tired to dwell on it. Anyway, I was wheeled into the operating room and an anesthesiast put me to sleep. About halfway through the operation, I was suddenly about 10 feet above the table looking down at them. The doctor, a black man, was looking in an eyepiece of a tube that was poked in a hole in my stomach. He was controlling rods that went into another tube that went into another hole in my stomach. There was a blonde lady looking into an eyepiece that went into a rod in the other hole in my stomach. The lady doctor said, that's a lot of leakage out of the liver. The doctor didn't reply to that, but said, pass me the clips. He was feeding the clips into another tube. I guess they were to close up the hole in the liver. The lady doctor said, doctor, you missed the clip. He looked at his watch. It was five o'clock. I could see it from looking down at it. That's okay. Close him up. I'm finished. I found out later that he had a flight to catch for his holiday trip. I was very sick for about two weeks. My girlfriend's kanji was all that I could hold down without throwing it up. Finally, I went to see my family doctor. Doctor, I'm dying, I told him. How do you know, he asked. My lips and gums are black. I have a tinny taste in my mouth. My eyesight is failing. My heart is rattling and then slow. He put me in his car and drove me right up to the hospital. I was put on a bed with wheels and pushed into the hospital, up the elevator and into a room where the CAT scan was. Luckily, there was no one using it at this time. I was put into it and the girl operator said, Wow, look at that. It was a large abscess of crap in the bag that holds the liver. My doctor opened the door and there was a specialist just walking by. And he was called in after seeing the picture. He said, can you stand pain? I have to since I don't have much time, I replied. He checked the picture and drew an X on my stomach, just left of my belly button. Then he took a sharp stainless rod and plunged it into my stomach into the CAT scan where he measured the picture about an inch and a quarter more. He marked that on the rod and plunged the rod that much farther in. He put a plastic tube over the rod and slid it down and pulled the rod out. The crap spewed out. It hit his forehead and he connected another tube to the one in my stomach. This led into a large jar. It filled quickly and as they changed it for another one, the doctor said, hang on, don't go to sleep or you might not wake up again. I don't know how you made it this far. I laid in the hallway with this draining for seven days. Supposedly after five days, the body heals around a tube and would not heal across. The, a doctor was walking by and I said, doctor, this is drained for seven days. Do you think that it's done? He pulled the tube out and put a band-aid on my stomach. Four hours later, they said, you can go home now. So I got up and left with Moni helping me. Two weeks later, I visited the doctor that did the operation. He asked, why are you here loudly? I said, doctor, you missed the clip. 
Who told you that? He asked. The blonde lady had looked into the other eyepiece, I said. She wasn't supposed to tell you that, he shouted, and got up and left. He verified the experience that I had, since how could I have known that he used steel clips instead of sutures? He never did try to repair my liver. For 22 years now, I haven't been able to eat large meals. Some would squeeze out into the tiny hole where the clip was supposed to close. I would feel sick for a day or so as it absorbed through the skin into the liver. I married Moni and we looked after each other ever since. <laughs>